for one to have a clear vision of the future and appreciate the present, one must understand the past. In 1947, a seed was planted in the heart of a Des Moines Public High School teacher. In one year, that seed grew and eventually produced its first season of fruit. In the fall of 1948, the first class of students to attend what is known today as Des Moines Christian School showed up to learn in a Christ-centered setting. Over the course of the next few years, Class sizes grew, more grades were added, buildings were outgrown, and giving hearts gave to the cause. In 1954, the ground was broken for the first new school, which at that time was just off a quiet gravel road on the edge of town. The first new school had one story and one hallway. Today, this building sits at the busy intersection of Franklin and 63rd Street. In the 1970s, the school experienced severe financial stress, so much so that the board voted to close the school in 1972. However, a man by the name of Roy Porter served on the school board and was also in leadership at First Federated Church. Through this connection, the church came alongside the Des Moines Christian School and provided financial resources that allowed the school to remain open. Then, in 1980, through continued growth and answered prayer, Des Moines Christian moved just a few blocks down the road to the east, where it held its first year of class at the iconic Franklin Junior High School. Though tough times came and went, as they do in life, the leadership continuously showed back up and walked through the door because that still small voice reminded them daily, I have called you. Stay faithful. Stay the course. And they did. For 25 years, the walls and halls inside the massive brick building were a place of joy, a place of wisdom, knowledge, and love. Eight years later, in 1987, the first class graduated from Des Moines Christian High School. Leadership knew it was always about the child, the student. The student always did and always would come first. Because since the beginning, and to this day, there was one mission to create hearts and minds for Christ. After 25 years of sharing Franklin Junior High with First Federated Church, it was time for DMC to become independent. And in 2005, Des Moines Christian relocated all students to their new Timberline campus in Urbandale. After years of preparation, the student turns the page to life's next chapter. Class, after graduating class, young adults graduate and year after year after year, the capable, compassionate, and talented students take their light out into his world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light.
You ready? I'm ready. Where do you want me looking? You're gonna look at me the whole time. Okay. Perfect. Gotta give me a pound. There we go. <laughs> Hold that for me. Okay. Hold that up. Give me a big smile. Psalm 145 says, one generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. We're sharing all of these stories with you so that you can celebrate God's faithfulness with Des Moines Christian School students, families, and employees. In 1948, we had one teacher and 14 students. Today, 74 teachers and almost 1,300 students. It is good. It is good to celebrate God's faithfulness. He was faithful then, he's faithful now, and he'll be faithful in the future. So the way Des Moines Christian School impacted our family and our kids individually was that it gave them a strong biblical teaching that they've carried through their marriages, having kids, and is now ingrained in their children. It's awesome to see that. You know, it sounds cheesy. I remember my parents talking about, oh, you get to have an education every day where people tell you about the love of Jesus and your faith. and. You're like, okay, mom and dad, that's great. But it's it's so true. That had such a huge role in my life, and I'm just so honored to know that my kids get to have that same experience and get to know Jesus now. Knowing that the teachers, the staff, were partnering with us in raising our kids in beliefs that we believed in, and knowing that the teachers were praying for our kids, huge, huge went to parent-teacher conferences uh, for the first time, right? Especially as new parents for the first time. And she opened up with prayer. And she prayed over our kids. She prayed over Katie. She prayed over me. There was a desire for our kids to succeed here. That's a really important thing today because I think the world says, we don't care whether you do this or that or the other thing. It's not about success anymore. And their success is in what great parents they are, and how they pass that on to their kids. As they've grown up, it's kind of the stool with three legs. You know, it was the family, it was the church, and it was the school. And they had the same support in all of those places. They got the same biblical teaching in all of those places. They found a lot of worth in their friendships. He recognizes a difference in the kids and the friends that he's hanging out with here. The things they talk about, the way that they encourage each other, these are real, uh, meaningful, deep friendships. You become like and are encouraged by and model your life after your friends in high school. That's part of your development. That's part of your identity. And so to have the friends here, that genuinely loved Jesus, genuinely cared about me, cared about my family, my parents, worked hard, wanted to do well in school. I cannot separate that from who I am today. The other thing I think about when I think about doing Christian is the teachers. This campus was designed for children. We have 79 classrooms that are set up for learning. We have social spaces that are set up to develop relationships, a wellness center for physical health, and a dedicated chapel space where we can worship the Lord. I loved school. I loved, um, honestly, I loved the academic challenge of Des Moines Christian, so I loved coming and being like, tested and having to work and study and all of that was actually really fun for me. At Des Moines Christian School, you'll hear us talk about our STEAM labs. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And that's a place where our students can go and learn through hands-on activities. The significance of STEAM here at DMC is huge. As a mechanical engineer major myself, the STEAM program at DMC really impacted me to get into that field. Um, and I think STEAM is really important too because it allows you to kind of explore, okay, is this for me, is it not for me, right? And so I think DMC does a great job of implementing their STEAM program here for sure. She loves STEAM. So like, I, she's a fanatic about science and she loves going there. And then she's a singer too. 
At Des Moines Christian School, we love the arts. We think they reflect the beauty of the Lord, and you can see that in the visual art classes that we provide, in the opportunities to be part of a drama or a musical. One thing that makes our music program very unique is the message that our show choir delivers at every competition that they attend. They deliver a gospel message that's shared with all schools and parents in attendance, and they have experienced great success as a team and as individual vocalists. I can almost get teary-eyed over it, where the school is today. And I feel so blessed to have been a part of that process. I'm very excited about the leadership that we have. I'm excited about the teachers. And God is in all the details here. God's in the center of this. And I've always said, if we keep God in the center of everything that we do, He will bless the school, and He has. DMC is worth the investment in your kids, and DMC is worth the investment of your time and your energy and your talents because they're stewarding what God's given them appropriately. And it makes me think of the word, again, one of those words you'd hear your parents throw around or say they were praying for it, but it makes me think of legacy. And I'm just thankful for the role that my Christian has played in my whole family's life, not just mine. So right now we have unprecedented demand for enrollment. And I often think about the families in the 1940s when they opened a school and I think, wow, one teacher, 14 kids, they would never be able to dream about the school Des Moines Christian is today. And when I think about the future of DMC, I think I'm just like a 1948 parent. I don't think I can imagine what God's gonna do at DMC. The impact that this school is having on this community is, is generations beyond where we're at. But in a time of turmoil, right, the light on the hill is the most important, right? And DMC is one of those lights on the hill here in our community. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, and all of us are the work of your hand. I believe God invites us into his story, his work, each and every day, no matter what we do, and we all just have the opportunity to do it here at a really special place called Des Moines Christian. So there was a board meeting in the spring of, of 2021 that really led to a, a critical decision point. We were either going to step out in faith and sign a contract with our general contractor to lock in critical materials for this project, or, or we were gonna be indefinitely delayed. At that moment, uh, we didn't have 100% of the project costs. The money wasn't all there, but we felt like God was. So we signed the contract with the general contractor, locked in the materials, got the timeline, and started this whole process. The 17,000 square feet of, of addition was obviously from a construction standpoint, quite difficult, but from a timeline standpoint, remodeling 23,000 square feet in a three month period of time was an extremely ambitious timeline, but we were able to pull together and uh, do some incredible things in that three month period of time and open ready for that first day of school. I can't overemphasize to the fact that we're not defined by this facility. We, we've put a lot of effort into facilities, but they are literally to facilitate the mission here. That's their job. You know, when Des Moines Christian started with 14 students in a church building, that wasn't the identity of Des Moines Christian School. You fast forward and, and when the school had over 100 students or when the school was at First Federated, that, that still wasn't our identity. When we moved out here to Urbandale, uh, when we crossed the 1,000 the student threshold, that wasn't our identity. 
Because our identity has always been our mission, and that is equipping minds and nurturing hearts to impact the world for Christ. And that's what we want to continue to focus on as we look to our future. And so when people ask me, you know, Kate, how, how big do you want Des Moines Christian to be? I, I have to respectfully say that's the wrong question because it's not about how big I want it to be or how big we want it to be or what the right size is. The question is, what does it look like for the next generation to equip minds and nurture hearts to impact the world for Christ? And so we just wanna make sure that we do everything that we can and prepare our graduates to step out on whatever stage that God puts them on in their life. And everybody has a stage. It doesn't matter what job, what vocation, what area of the world that they live in, uh, that stage is there and ready for them uh, to proclaim Jesus with their lives and to make an impact on the world around them. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. 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 You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I was so privileged to be among so many great people and God doing so many amazing things at Des Moines Christian in those 14 years that I was superintendent. You know, I consider it a blessing and, and an honor. It's humbling, actually, to have seen all that he did and to move the school into the place where it is today. Uh, it's just remarkable. My four grandkids go to Des Moines Christian now, and I couldn't be happier about that. I think the, the fun part was just, first of all, walking up into the second floor. This was a home for many years for me, and so it was fun to, to come back and then to, uh, to leave a visual story on the, on the board. Um, we've had a lot of talented kids come out of here, and um, their gifts are just given by God, and they're so amazing, and it's so fun to see them use it. So the senior class this year had a classmate who had leukemia and passed away. Nathan and Charlie were both in the percussion section together. So Charlie, as a tribute to Nathan this senior year, wanted to write something for him musically, just to create a memorial. I mean, it's exciting to watch that creative process, but to watch the crew's eyes light up, it's like, that's the whole intent of this thing, to see how what we do at DMC impacts lives. Cause the God 